and welcome to the Ancient Slumber podcast, but this is not show number 20. My name is Chris Ward and I am joined as ever by my co-host Myron Schmidt. How are you doing, Myron? Great, Chris. This is more like mini episode one. Yeah, mini episode number one. We are not bringing you the paranormal activity experience that you were all hoping for, but we will be in a couple of weeks. Well, I'm sure there was one person somewhere hoping for it. (laughs) Yeah, you. All right, all right, all right. (laughs) Yeah, we will be bringing you the uh, all six uh, Paranormal Activity films in one show in a couple of weeks' time, but we just wanted to throw out a little mini episode in the meantime because scheduling's been all over the place and I've been busy, you've been busy, and blah, 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 blah. Exactly. Exactly. So we are going to do a little review of a documentary that came out over here a couple of weeks ago called The Killing of America. Funnily enough... It's not out over in America. Never has been. No, and we will discuss why when we get to it. It's uh, it's just odd to have a movie about America that's not, like, you know, out in America. Well, it's weird, because normally when uh, we talk about films being banned and things like that, it's normally they're banned over here. Exactly. <laughs> you know, because we can't obviously upset anybody at any time ever. <laughs> You've only got a fucking look at Twitter at the moment, really, haven't you? Oh, Lord. Oh, dear. But then, you know, as the the state of America at the moment and uh, the things that have been happening over the past few weeks, it's uh, quite a timely release, I think. It actually is a, it's a very timely release. Very yes. timely. But, uh, yeah, before we delve into that, though, uh, we could have a little catch-up, a little chit-chat. Uh, anything you wanted to mention? Uh, why don't you start first? Why don't I start first? Yeah, we're not going to do a full good, bad and ugly, but I thought we could just do a little bit of a what we've been watching type thing. Oh, oh, then I'm unprepared. Look at you catching me off guard. Well, we can do that or anything you've been buying or just anything, any headlines you've seen or anything you like. (laughs) I don't give a fuck. Talk about what you want. Just talk. Talk, man. Talk. (laughs) Well, now I've got to look. Now I'm, you know, now I'm paranoid. Paranoid. Oh, I did watch Hmm. The Exorcism of Emily Rose yesterday. All right. Is that a first time watch? It is. I, I've never seen it before, and I found it to be... Uh, I've seen it a few times. Quite quite good, actually. I, I was pretty surprised. It's not bad. What is it? Yeah. Uh, who, oh, what's the guy's name in it? Tom Wilkinson, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, from The Full yeah. Monty. Yes. Yeah, I haven't watched it for a few years, but uh, yeah, I quite like that one. Yeah, yeah. As an exorcism I, uh, film. I, I, got, I also watched a really funny uh, Argentinian horror movie called Cold Sweat. Have you seen this one? Cold Sweat. No, I've heard James Brown cold sweat. Is it like that? Uh, no, no, I don't believe it's that. It's a bunch <laughs> of, uh, it's, it's literally, literally two old men. Yes. Capture women and torture them. Oh. By covering them in nitroglycerin. Now, you don't normally watch things like that. I, I don't. And they didn't focus on the torture. Most of the movie focused on the hilarity of having two old men try and keep women hostage. One of them has to use a walker. It is absolutely hilarious. <laughs> is, it, is it supposed to be hilarious? <laughs> yes, it oh. is. Oh, right. Okay. Oh, I haven't heard of that one. But it's uh, they have a chase scene. Best ever. Best ever. Okay. I shall keep an eye out for that. The girl is trying to get... <laughs> The girl is trying to get into a rain barrel of water to neutralize or wash off the nitroglycerin. Yeah. And the old geezer is trying to run after her with his walker and squirt her with acid or some chemical. Absolutely hysterical. <laughs> Sounds like a right laugh. Oh, it was good. It, 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 it's, it, there's a lot of laughs like that. So it's really not a not a serious movie. No. Nah. They were making – I think they were making an Argentinian type of uh, political statement. Okay. But it was good. Oh, well, I don't know that. I shall add that to my list. Uh, what have I watched? I watched Green Room. You did? What did you think? Um, I liked it, but I didn't think it was amazing, like a lot of the reviews I've been reading about it. Okay, okay. Isn't Patrick Stewart a great actor? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's very, very I, good. I mean, let's be honest. He, he could go from Captain Kirk no, he to can't. P- Picard. Coach. Picard, God, I'm going to die. People are going to send me hate mail. They will. Um, <laughs> I live in England right next to Chris Ward. <laughs> you would fucking want to do that. <laughs> uh, 
but no, Captain Picard to uh, Charles Xavier to mm. other just fantastic roles he's done. Yeah, oh yeah, and, he's a great. And great then actor. he shows up as the guy who's like a a really creepy villain. Mm. Oh yeah, he does it very well. And I think that's what got me was was uh, uh, Patrick Stewart's character. Yeah, I mean it, it's it's a fine film. It's a good story. It's a sort of a nice straight ahead sort of thriller. The acting is very good. I mean the violence is very well staged and everything like that. But I think the build up to it, the reviews I've read, it was like, oh, this is fantastic. This is awesome. This is you know this is like martyrs style violence and blah blah blah. And I watched it and I just thought it was good. I didn't think it was amazing. I think I put it at like three and a half or four stars. Yeah, it's a, it's a four, solid four star film. Absolutely, you know, and I'll happily watch it again. So I mean, it's not a problem like that. But I just I think it was a little bit of hype around it that I don't think it quite hit those highs for me. Yeah, I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. Hey, good news for you, Chris. What's that? I watched some found footage movies that I thought were stupid. Fuck me, it's taken long enough. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I watched uh, one called Undocumented, which was just horribly bad. Hmm. And then I watched another one called A Night in the Woods, and it just didn't do anything. Okay. Uh, you know, so. Well, I think we'll probably get into a deeper found footage discussion on show 20. Yeah, I think so, too. Because I certainly have some questions to put to you. And riddle me this. Yeah. Why do people, why do people think Man Bites Dog is that good? Help, help me understand. I've got to be honest, I've never seen it. Let me save you the trouble. Don't well, I, watch it. I've got it, actually. I've got it on my computer, but I've just never got around to watching it. Oh, God. Did you like the movie Antichrist? Um, I don't know about like. I think appreciate. <laughs> is, uh, yeah. Are you ever going to watch that movie again? I probably will do. Oh, really? Okay. You might like Man Bites Dog, then. I doubt it, but you might. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. It's one of those ones. It's I've just never got around to it. It's a weird art house one. It's just, yeah, okay, whatever. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of weird art house stuff. Yeah, I watched, Oh, God. Talking I of which, I watched Driller Killer this week. I've seen that one, too. <laughs> I know. I saw your review on Letterboxd. I'm not going to say too much, because my review of it will be going live on Flickering Myth uh, when the film comes out. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm... I'm gonna make a I'm gonna make a guess that we're not of the same mind of this movie. That you may have, uh, you know, um, may have I, been op, op, opposite of me. No, not true. I'll say that I went. Really? I went about half a star higher than you on Letterbox, and that's purely because I watched <laughs> I'm surprised. it. On, and that's purely because I watched it on Blu-ray. <laughs> so I thought, oh well, Blu-ray's a bit oh. better than DVD. So um, I am yeah, buying this. No. I am buying the steel book though. It is a very nice steel book to look at, and it will look nice on my <laughs> shelf. And and you know, if I can get a video nasty in the best edition possible, then I've yes, got one, I've got I one up on the fucking moral majority, you know. So you're making Mary Whitehouse spit in her grave. Good. <laughs> After all that effort of going and trying and banning it, here I am with a nice steelbook Blu-ray. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah. Anyway, so go next to her grave and take a picture of you holding the steelbook, <laughs> like a selfie. I would never take a selfie. How dare you? <laughs> uh, what else did I watch? I was going to tell yeah, you no, about. Oh, yeah. oh, I watched Stand by Me. Oh, good, good movie. Yeah. Uh, why the fuck I've never watched it before? I don't know. Because it's it's my sort of bag, really. I love those sort of eighties coming of age films, you know, and they're set in the fifties and all that sort of stuff. I love all that. Yeah, yeah. It was a, it's a solid film. Yeah. Never got round to it. I've seen clips of it and blah blah blah. Never got round to it, and I saw it on DVD for, like, pence, so I picked it up. Uh, yeah, I enjoyed it four and a half for me. I loved it. Yeah, yeah, it's a very solid very solid movie. Yeah, yeah, I did enjoy that. I haven't read the story in years, but it's a great movie. Yeah, uh, yeah, I've never read the stories. The body, the story's called, isn't it? Yes, you're yes, right. I am right. And I've also been watching a few Universal Monsters films as well. Can't say as I'm surprised at that. No, I love them. We are going to have to do some of them one day, you know. Okay, well, give me some advanced notice. Oh yeah, yeah. Because, um, I'm going to have to order. I'm going to have to order them or go look for them used. I think most of them are on YouTube, to be honest. So you might be right. But uh, I, <laughs> I watched uh, Son of Frankenstein, which okay. is the third of the Frankenstein films. Very, very underrated. Karloff is the monster in this one, but it's because it's not directed by James Whale. A lot of people tend to write it off, but no, still a fine film. And I watched Son of Dracula, 
which was a first watch for me, which has got Lon Chaney in it. Um, okay, okay. It's okay. It's set in New Orleans in like the swamps and that, so it's got quite a gloomy setting, but I don't think Lon Chaney's a very good Dracula. But, uh, you know, it was, it was okay. And I watched Frankenstein Meets the Wolfman, which I adore, even though Bela Lugosi is horrible as the monster. <laughs> I think you grew up on more of the monster movies than I did living over in Britain. Yeah, oh yeah, we used to get these used to be on telly quite a lot. Because you got a real love for them, and I yeah, I, I guess I kind of grew up more on a lot more mainstream kind of stuff, mm. which explains my bad taste. <laughs> yeah, I remember years ago, eighties, I must, must be Channel Four over here did a season of uh, like Universal monster films like every night for the Christmas holiday sort of thing. Oh, very cool. So, uh, yeah, that was. I remember watching those a lot. Yeah, oh yeah, I love those old films. You know, even even the, even the not so good ones are still fun. It, you know, the 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 digital right the movies we don't show Universal monster movies over here. No, no. Oh, that's strange. I thought there'd be a big uh, a big market for that over there. Not not anymore. Maybe at one time there was, but they just they're not on the TV like they are over there or were over there. It's very weird. Oh, strange. But it's got a lot to do with who owns rights and whatnot. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll say it's the same as Hammer films, really. You know, you always get the, the odd few that are always shown, and then you get the ones that are never shown at all, don't you? Yeah, <laughs> it's never the good ones. It's always like, uh, what is it? Rights of Satanic Rights of Dracula or something like that. Oh, uh, well, that's public domain. That's why you always see that one around. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, uh, we will return to Hammer as well next year. I think. Okay, we've had a request from a listener, so. Oh, very cool. Hey, just think. Yeah. Over here, for the the uh, low, low sum of $45, mm. you can get a human centipede Blu-ray combo of all the movies. Wow. $45, did you say? Yep. So what is that, about 30 pounds? Uh, the current global rate, that's about 1,000 pounds. For 45 <laughs> Yeah. The way the euro's plunged since Brexit. Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> um, now, that's probably about... 25 30 pounds something like that for all three yeah, i suppose i wouldn't pay well i did pay for okay i've, all, I've all got right. all three on blu-ray but i didn't pay yeah. that for it but uh, oh yeah we'll get to human centipede don't you worry <laughs> after saw we will you're making me sit through paranormal activity i'll make you sit through human centipede oh god, I can't. <laughs> oh, god. he says only three of them yeah but that's yeah all right fair play fair play i i can't argue with that i can't you're right. <laughs> oh dear. Right. On that note, you're then. right. You're you're right. <laughs> Brilliant. On that note, should we go into uh, our little discussion? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. I'll play a trailer. I am an American, and I killed Americans. I am a human being, and I killed human beings, and I did it in my society. Drop the gun. Drop the gun. America the Beautiful has become America the Violent. This is the country that produces an attempted murder every three minutes, a murder victim every 20 minutes, 27,000 murders a year, and the number is growing. No one is safe. But when I saw him there that night, he seemed like a, a saint. Every morning when I get up, I say, I wish that son of a gun were alive. For the first time ever, anywhere, you can see the true face of the evil that is destroying our country. You will meet the new breed of killer. This broad I kill, this broad I've never seen before. They're veterans, honor students, advocates of law and order. They will cry. Mama, I killed thee. Brian. They will laugh. They will tell you why they have to kill. To shock her with a cold metal. And a week later, I murdered my mother. I said, no, it's got to stop. It's got to stop. I just stabbed to death and cut the throat of an innocent young woman. As I'm sitting there with a severed head in my hand, talking to it. Every scream. Every cry for help. Every image of madness is real. No matter how paralyzing the shock. You're the mother. Know the truth and survive 
the killing of America. It's okay. Nobody's getting hurt. Just come on in. Well, hey, Dad. hey, come on in. You better come on in. Come in, please. Come on in. It's too late now. Grab your seat over there. Right then, The Killing of America, first released in 1981, directed by Sheldon Renan and Leonard Schrader, who is uncredited. Ooh. Ooh. I won't say this is starring anybody, because people don't star in documentaries, but it is narrated by Chuck Riley, whose voice you will know from millions of different trailers over the years. And it all features interviews with the likes of Ed Kemper, Wayne Henley, and, uh, what's his name, Ted Bundy. So yep. There you go. Okay, I'll read the IMDb. It is a documentary of the decline of America. Features a lot of great footage exclusive to this film from race rights to serial killers and much more. Right then. This is banned in America. It is. It's pretty easy to see why once you watch it, isn't it? it yeah. I mean, but it, it's funny because a lot of the, the footage on there, um, although not identical, but, hmm. you know, the same stuff is in our culture and for this one to be banned i i just don't know why to be honest there's nothing new there's nothing earth shattering here no maybe it's just they put it all in one package i think it's because yeah it's like it's it's put in a package and literally dumped in front of you and said here have have a look at your country and i think that's what upsets people you could show this footage individually a little bit every night over a series of weeks and nobody would probably bat an eyelid but like, when it, exactly. When exactly. it's all wrapped up in front of you, and like, here, here's what's wrong with your country. Bosh. There you go. <laughs> and just, there's nothing on here that we don't know already. Right, right. Exactly. But the clips that they use are um, really unfavorable. But at the time, and even in today, yeah, they're very, very relevant. They're very relevant. And context is everything as well. You know, it is a series of yes, clips. Yes, You know. Right, yeah, the film basically starts in 1963 with... The assassination of Kennedy, and it goes up to uh, the murder of John Lennon in the early 80s. So you've got a nearly 20-year period that it covers, featuring, you know, uh, Charles Manson, Ted Bundy, Berkowitz, Ed Kemper, all these sort of serial killers who we know, we know about. Yep. There's a big coverage of the Vietnam War with some really shocking footage of that. Uh, I, I should have made a note of the guy's name, to be honest, but you know me, I don't make notes, which is probably why I'm not CEO of a company. <laughs> <laughs> are, are you talking about the famous time photo where the uh, prisoner was just outright shot yes. in front of everybody? Yes, that's it. I did, yeah, I yeah, did actually write yeah. the name down, and, I, and uh, I've lost it now. Yep, yep. Oh, yeah. The execution of uh, alleged Viet Cong murderer Nguyen Van Lem, I want to say. Yep. That's how you pronounce yep. it. Yep, he's just shot in the head by a Vietnamese general. Body slumps to the floor. Big fountain of blood come out. Yeah, it's, there's some shocking footage on here. I don't remember if it was Life magazine at the time or Time magazine, but one of those, you know, publications had that instant right after he was shot. And that's an iconic picture of the Vietnam War for us. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's one of the pictures. You, you would have seen it in various, you know, media outlets over the last 30, 40 years. Yeah, it's certainly an image. But to actually exactly, see- exactly. What I found interesting was is that some of the choice of their – their serial killers weren't necessarily uh, gun related. Hmm. Now, I don't remember Ed Ed Kemper or Ted Bundy using a gun to kill people. No, they do frame the documentary with statistics about gun ownership, uh, which is obviously something that's still prevalent in America today. So uh, you know, I don't think a lot many lessons have been learnt. But uh, yeah. Oh no, never never will be. Never will be. Never will be. But I don't think the documentary itself isn't about guns. It's just that's how they frame it. Because obviously Kennedy was shot in the head and then John Lennon was mur- killed by a gun as well. Well, and they had other things. They had um, the tower sniper shooter in the 60s at the University of Texas. I can't remember his name. Oh, Charles. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. I don't remember his last time. I keep, I keep wanting to say Ward, but that's not right. <laughs> how dare you? I know. But, you know, they had a very ex- extensive coverage of that and they had footage of the time and they had a, lo- a lot more depth than we get nowadays. That's it. Yeah. And so as as an American, it was very interesting to watch some of that history unfold. When you saw the guys stand in the spots where the sniper stood and, you know, he, he reenacted the, the positions that the sniper would have been in and even how he felt, exactly. even how he fell to the ground, you know, fascinating. Exactly. It was really scary, concerning and interesting all at the same time. Mm. 
because the first thing I went to is, oh boy, I don't even remember the time frame, but we had a, uh, you know, DC sniper, the uh, father and uh, pseudo stepson, you know, that, that were driving around in a trunk with a little hole cut out shooting people at random. Yeah. And, you know, the terror that gripped Washington, D.C., the nation's capital was, was just mind blowing at the time. Yeah. I mean, the thought that you could get hit at any time by someone you don't, someone you don't even know. Exactly. Anytime, anywhere. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's scary stuff. And, uh, but these people are allowed to own guns. Yep. Yep. And that, matter of fact, Chris, if you go back and watch some of the news footage of that time, you'll see gas station owners had erected tarps over the pumps so people could pump gas. Oh, I see. Yeah. 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 So, you know, it was a scary time. And, and yes, people like that are allowed to own guns. Yeah. It's, <laughs> you always, you you watch it and you think you know what what has to happen for someone to take action, and this is you know this is thirty five years ago this documentary. Yeah, and it, it doesn't matter. You know, you've only got to look look at the headlines of the, over the last year and go back to the uh, the Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting. You'd yeah. think that would have been enough. Yeah. Really, I mean, you think elementary kids, ele- elementary age school kids getting gunned down. You think that would have been enough to institute stricter gun control? Nope. Ain't gonna happen. No, it's it's quite harrowing, really. But um, yeah, it's not just the guns that are uh, that are commented on because you know we get a, quite a description of Ted Bundy and how yep. uh, he killed his a lot of his victims. Um, yep. Yep. I've I've got books on serial killers here. It's something I've always found fascinating, and um, I've got to say, when you're actually listening to the judge in the courtroom read out the details of what he was doing to these victims, it, it's harrowing stuff. Oh. Horrific, horrific stuff. And then they show you the pictures of the victims on the bed. You know, there was one woman that was described as being, you know, vaginally and anally violated, and not just with parts of his body. He was putting metal pipes and all sorts of things into them. It, horrific stuff, I know, right? It's yeah, it really is. It's you know, and you think, especially when there was another. I didn't write the guy's name down, <laughs> which is a common thread for me. But um, you know, in the seventies, there was a guy who murdered something like twenty boys. And it didn't make any headlines because it was so exactly common, it was so commonplace by then. You know, over here, if that happened, that's front page news across the country. But, but you got to think about it, though. In the 70s, for whatever reason, serial killers were I don't want to use the word common, but there was a lot of them that came to light. Hmm. And the two that dominated were, were Ted Bundy and John Wayne Gacy. Yep. Gacy's mentioned. Yep. Everything else got shoved out of the news. Yes. It's difficult to sit here. Oh, we're going to keep saying it, you know. It's fascinating to watch. It's interesting. It's gripping. But it's when it's presented to you in that way, you know, it's not softly, softly. It's not, uh, you know, wrapped up in a bow and uh, perhaps we can help these people. This is what we need to do. It's literally, Bosh, look what's happened to these people. Look what they've done. Yep. Here, here yep. it is. What What would a critic say? An unflinching look, maybe? Unflinching. It is unflinching. And uh, Absolutely. The section where they interviewed Ed Kemper is... Uh, it's fucking disturbing, I'll be honest. You know, oh, yeah. I mean, I'll, be, I'll be honest, I didn't really know much about Ed Kemper. I've, I've heard his name. Um, he's probably in my books I've got upstairs, but I've never, I don't really know a lot about him. But he, you know, he was murdering people, not just murdering, he was raping their dead bodies after he'd cut their heads off. You know, he was fellating himself with the severed heads. He's, he was eating their body parts. You know, this is, but he was being interviewed and he was as calm. And as, and as matter of fact as, you know, as anybody, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And it's just like when they caught Dennis Rader a few years ago. Yeah. You know, the VTK killer. Yeah. yeah. They were showing him on the news and having interviews. And you're just like, the hell? What? They make a point in the documentary with a couple of the killers by giving their uh, IQ number. Uh huh. And I think Ed Kemper was something. He's, he had an IQ of something like 139. Yeah, you know, exactly. He, he's an intelligent guy. And. You wouldn't have seen the special features on the disc, but on there's some uh, interviews with the director and the editor, and they were saying that the most terrifying thing about the Ed Kemper interview was what he didn't say on camera, but he said it when the camera was switched off. Ed Kemper was left alone in his cell with uh, the writer, Leonard Schrader, and he, apparently he said to Schrader, I've already killed you. And Schrader looked at him and said, you know, what? And he said, everybody I've ever met, I've already killed them in my head. And, Fuck it up. <laughs> I would have been, I, I would have left a giant trail of shit as I ran <laughs> out of that cell. Yeah. Let's be honest. 
And Schrader even said, you know, you talk to him, he says he's the kind of guy, Ed Kemper's the kind of guy you could go and have a drink with and you could sit down and it would be such stimulating conversation. He's intelligent, he's quite friendly to talk to, he says, but there's just something there. <laughs> and he says he's it, and he, the mask slips and that's it. Yeah, exactly. And it's terrifying, it's absolutely terrifying. And uh, he was, I think, wasn't he released, for, uh, paroled to go and live with his mother, even though his mother was the victim of his crime? <laughs> Yeah, no, he was the one they, they let out to go live with his mother, and then he killed a whole bunch more people. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, but initially he'd attacked his mother, he'd been arrested, and then they let him go to go back and live with his mother. Yes, yes. Oh, fuck his sake. You know, <laughs> dude, again, again dude, what's got to happen? Dude, yeah. that, that statement you made is the American justice system mm. in a lot of ways. You know, it's, uh, yeah. But um, Ed Kemper's, I mean, he's still alive. He's, he, they made a point of saying that he... Um, he records audiobooks. Oh, that's creepy. Well, yeah, but he records audiobooks for blind people, you know, not books that he's written himself. Generally, that's his uh, job okay. from but, jail. And he still does it to this day. Yeah. Um, I suppose he has got one of them voices. That's you, still creepy. It is creepy, but you've got to think, well, that's what? Do. <laughs> there's no punishment here. There's no justice here. He just he sits in a room. He, re- does, he has a job recording audiobooks, you know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I am not in any way an advocate for the death penalty. See, I, I, I was just about to bring that up, actually, the death penalty thing. Yeah. I, I don't like it, but there are a small percentage of people who we just need that and just that's it. We're, you know, the Ed Kempers of the world, mm. the Ted Bundys of the world, you know. Yeah. And it's I mean, th- those are the people that the death penalty will never be abolished in certain places. Because of yeah. them, you know, I mean, I'm not yeah. I'm not completely pro death penalty. But like you say, you know, I think if it's applied to these people, you know, there's a there's what are you going to argue against? You know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I know. Here's a question I was going to ask you. Hmm. I know that in Europe, certainly they've had their fair share of, of uh, serial killers. Yes. And let's just talk gen- not Eastern Europe. Let's just talk, you know, what we old dudes consider Western Europe. OK. I, are they as prevalent? Are they as prevalent? Do they get as much media sensation as they do over here? Um, what's what's it like? I've I've got to be honest. Not really. The last one that I can think of was that was sort of big in the news was Harold Shipman, which was a few years ago. Uh, he was a doctor, and he killed dozens, if not hundreds, of people who went to see him, and he was he was literally just killing people. You know, oh, you know, granny goes to visit the doctor. Oh, oh, she's slipping away. That's because you're injecting her with some shit or you're giving her some tablets. How long did it take for the police to make the connection? Oh, years, years. Really? Yeah. Because he's a doctor. He's trusted. Yeah. You know, as old fashioned as that sounds, that is still the case. You know, the family doctor is still very, very much the trusted person. But I I don't know about over there, but I do know here uh, mortality rates for physicians are actually tracked. Oh, really? You know, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I mean, that makes sense. You would think that, you know, if if someone's job is to have people's lives in their hands, you know, if the numbers are getting up, the questions should be asked, shouldn't they? Yeah, they they should. It, and even if it's all accidental, I mean, let's say you've got a surgeon who has a seventy percent mortality rate. You don't want them in your hospital. No, exactly. You know, yeah. But I mean, um, Shipman's the last one I can think of that was sort of major front page news okay i gotcha and that was a few years ago now but yeah we we got one brewing over here right now all right somebody found a girl chained in a um i call them sea tainers but you know those uh metal containers you put on a a ship and yeah yeah transports yeah yeah they they found um they found her changed uh, chained up in one of those containers oh dear and the body count is already up to seven or eight if not higher all right Okay, so and they they've made a connection. It's all the same person. Yeah, I mean it, it's still they estimate fifty to one hundred serial killers operating in America at any given time. Blimey, it's frightening. And you just ask yourself, holy shit! You combine that with you know the gun violence, and you're like, holy crap! And that's only the ones they know about. Yes, exactly. You know, what about the ones they don't know about? Exactly. Back to the film. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a uh, I. I was surprised at how well done the documentary was. It was really good. Uh, they picked, I thought, great cases, great film footage to edit together to make their point. Yeah. And it's, and it's kind of sad that we can't get a release over here even now. 
it's one of those films you feel that people should, especially in America, people should see. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, it may not change things one iota, but every bit helps. I'm a firm believer in that. Well, absolutely. Yeah. You know, and you've only got to look at what's been happening in America these past few weeks. You know, when you listen to the voice of the people, shall we say, you know, there's there's unrest again, you know. And yeah, these things will keep exactly. on happening. These things will keep on happening. Back to the film. It's very much a film that's in the style of the old Mondo documentaries. Yeah. That yep. used to circulate yep. in the seventies and that. It's very grubby, very gritty, but it it's there to be seen and the footage is just it's it is shocking. Yeah, even for me, and I, I always say you know, there's nothing that shocks me, you know, I'm quite I'll watch anything. You know, <laughs> you've only got to look at my D V D collection to get a <laughs> Well yeah, with that. But, but you know yeah. what I mean, you know, there's nothing, I've, there's, yeah, yeah, yeah. all these horror films that come out, I'll sit and watch them, there's nothing, you know, all this human centipede and Serbian film and all that, I've seen all of them, you know, and it, it's made up, it's, despite how sort of dark and grim and all they all get, it's made up, it's fantasy, and I know that. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, you watch this, and it's just, whoa, that's a real person who's just had his head blown off, you know, the, the, what, the image that stuck with me, actually, there was a shot of a guy who was on a sofa, just slumped and he had a shotgun between his legs and his head was split in two. He looked, his head looked yep. like, you know, Terminator two, the metal, liquid metal Terminator. It just split in two straight down the middle. Yeah. Yeah. And it's yep. a very quick shot and they don't linger on it, but fucking hell, it's powerful, powerful. What's even more powerful is I knew I used to work with a guy who survived something like that. Oh man. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's even worse to watch it after that because his face was never right. He could barely talk. He couldn't he had to eat, a, eat with a feeding tube. It was, you know, oh, you know, you, yeah. But I will say something. I hope the uh, distributors are listening mm-hmm. because I think it's the mark of a good documentary when you could talk about stuff like this and yes. get so far off track and go down rabbit holes. To me, that's the mark of a good, solid documentary. I've always said documentaries are the hardest thing to review because most documentaries, you've got to be invested in the subject. You know, if you've got a, a documentary about, yes. uh, you know, about Metallica, for instance, you know, people who aren't Metallica fans aren't going to get anything out of it. So who are you selling it to? Exactly. Exactly. But this uh, this is something that everybody should see. Yes, I agree. I agree. But I really like the way they portrayed the civil rights protesters yeah. were treated. We need never to forget that in this country. Yeah. Uh, that said, when I was watching the special features, the director said that one of the things that, uh, you know, at the beginning, there's those shots where the, there will the cameras looking around at groups of people in Los Angeles being sort of abused by the police and all this sort of stuff. That guy who was filming that was just walking around with a camera under his arm, but he had it held in such a way that it looked like the camera was off. And it, the director was saying the guy was just walking around. And, you know, if somebody said something that he felt was worthy to go on the camera, you know, he'd just back up, suddenly swing his arms around, catch it on camera, then just carry on walking. It was very covert filming, a lot of it. Yeah, well, he might have been taken to task quite quickly by a fire hose or something like that if uh, if he wasn't doing it covertly. That's it, that's it. So there you go. Uh, not a lot else to say about this film, really. It's, yeah, it's shocking, it's violent, it's quite depressing, but I also think it's pretty much essential watching. Yes, absolutely is. It's called The Killing of America. It's available now in the UK, courtesy of Severin Films. It's available on Blu-ray, DVD and digital. Don't go looking for it in America because you will not find it <laughs> and, unless you know some very dodgy people. But uh, the disc also <laughs> includes the Japanese edit of the film, which I haven't watched yet, but uh, I will watch that because apparently it's even more violent. Interesting. Interesting. It's called Violence USA and it's a Japanese edit. I'd like to get a look at that. That That is interesting. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, it's a Blu-ray, so it won't play on your player. So Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, you know. This is the the world of the internet, you know. There are various ways. <coughs> I never said that. What ways? Uh, you you may be able to get it imported. <laughs> no, you can't do that. It's bad yes. still. No, you can't do that. No, don't listen to me. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> so yeah, that's that. Um, you know, you know, I got to fly to England, get a Blu-ray player, fly back, get a, an adapter, and do it like that. <laughs> Adapt it for the electrical current and all that stuff. Yeah, it's a lot of effort in it. You could just fly to England and w- come around here and watch it. There you go. There you go. But uh, yeah, when I will watch that, I shall let you know then how uh, how different it is. Please do. I will do. So yeah, there you go. Did you have a star rating for this? Uh, four point five. Four five. I gave it a four, and I don't know why because I. <laughs> it sounds odd. 
I didn't know where to go with it because it's not a film you could say, oh, it's a definite four star film. Do you know what I mean? I, I do. And I think I gave it a 4.5. I don't even know why I didn't do a five. Hmm. But it's, it's because I thought about it a lot for days afterwards. I think that's it. I'm still thinking about it now, you know. Exactly. Exactly. You know, and the more I think about it, I'm thinking, actually, how could you improve this? I don't know if you could improve it. Is it a five star film? I don't know. So, yeah, I'm tend to say, I'm saying four stars. That's what I gave it on Letterbox. But, you know, four, four point five, five. It's around the area. It's certainly something you need to watch. I would love to see those guys cover the 80s because, you know, it ended 79 or 80, something like that. Mm. I would love to see him cover the rest of the 80s. Yeah. Yeah, that would be good. It would be really interesting to see. You saying that's just reminded me of one of the facts in the film that I thought pretty much typified the whole thing. It's when they were showing the vigil in New York after John Lennon got shot. Yep. And it said during the vigil when they were playing Imagine and everybody was crying and thinking of peace and all that sort of stuff. Two people were shot in the crowd. Isn't, isn't that just crazy shit? Yeah, yeah. A vigil of a world-famous superstar is shot, and, yeah, two people get shot in the crowd whilst that's going on, and that's just... There's no words for it. Yep. But there you go. That's the killing of America. Go and watch it. Fascinating viewing. Absolutely. Everybody, everybody who can see it should see it. Absolutely, absolutely. Brilliant. Right. That's that done. That's our little mini review done. Done and dusted. Done and dusted. We shall return in a couple of weeks' time, I'm sure, with show number 20. Exactly. As soon as I get my face paralysis cleared up and uh, everything else, we're good to go. <laughs> it's all right. You do not sound like a hillbilly throughout. Don't worry. That's good. <laughs> I'll be editing. Shall I run your voice track through a, a filter of some sort? <laughs> the, the Sid Haig filter. <laughs> oh, talking of Sid Haig. <laughs> my miss, do you know what my or missus the Bill Mosley filter? Bill Mosley. Yeah. What did your miss? My missus has bought me for Christmas, and I know she's bought them because I told her to. Is <laughs> the House of a Thousand Corpses Captain Spaulding figure and the Devil's Rejects Captain Spaulding figure? <laughs> like from uh, Funko Pop or from somewhere else? Oh, it's the um, it's the it begins with an N. I can't remember the name of it. Oh, they do all the figures. Uh, Nemo. Not okay, Nemo. I, I I think I. Can't remember. Anyway, she found them brand new on eBay, like really cheap, and she just looked at it. She just looked at it, looked at me, and went, "That really is you, isn't it?" So yeah, I've got little miniature <laughs> me's now. She looked at that the one. Awesome. She looked at the Sid Haig from Devil's Rejects and just looked at me and went, "That's you." <laughs> and she bought them. <laughs> Hopefully, she's never seen the movies. Uh, she's seen Devil's Rejects. She hasn't seen House of a Thousand Corpses. Oh, don't torture her. Don't torture the missus. <laughs> oh, God, don't. But that's uh, a discussion for another time. It is, it is. We will do them one day, you know. I do. <laughs> Righty-ho, then. Let's call this to an end. So, yeah, I shall speak to you again in a couple of weeks when we will be doing Show 20, all six Paranormal Activity films. Sounds good, brother. Oh, hey, speak to you then. Speak to you then. Bye. 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 <laughs>